Enjoy -to testing with Playwright. Hey everyone, my name is Debbie O'Brien. I'm a senior technical PM at Microsoft advocating for testing, especially end-to-end -end testing with Playwright. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm an international speaker, teacher, open source contributor, YouTuber, and uh, I absolutely love sports. If you follow me on Twitter, Debs underscore O'Brien, Normally you'd see pictures of me cycling and running around the island of Mallorca, but at the moment, because I'm five months pregnant, I'm literally just walking around the island or um, cycling in my garage, swimming in the sea. But yes, uh, check out uh, my website as well, debbie.codes. Um, but we're here to talk about Playwright, so let's get straight into it. So what is Playwright? Playwright is reliable end-to-end -end testing for your modern web apps. Test your VDOPs or any other apps. Uh, you can test any browser, so you can test uh, Chrome, WebKit, Firefox, and it works across any platform, whether you're on a Windows, a Mac, or a Linux, with just one API. Now your tests run in full isolation. What that means is what happens in one test stays in that test, what happens in that other test stays in that test, right? They don't, you know, they're isolated from each other. So you don't have to worry about cleaning up between uh, the state between tests, et cetera. And tests are really, really fast because tests are running in parallel and that just comes out of the box. So you just get fast execution of those tests. And we've got some very powerful tooling. I'm going to show you some of that tooling in this talk. And also, um, I'm going to talk about you know, JavaScript and TypeScript here, but it is multi-language, so you can go away and write those tests in Python or Java.net if you uh, wanted to. So we know that uh, with component testing, uh, Playwright uses Vite uh, to basically get that preview going and to be able to you know, see your component in isolation and be able to test it. I don't want to talk about component testing today. I want to talk about end-to-end -end testing so that you can test your complete user flows. And I want to show you kind of how easy it is, you know, to get something up and running and basically have a test done. So we're going to go through the whole process. I'm going to give you a live demo of basically how to uh, write a test in a couple of minutes um, and run that test. So what are we going to do? Well, the demo is actually going to record um, a test testing the Stack Blitz website. So you'll see down the links below, you've got a link there to the Stack Blitz uh, container, and you'll be able to open that up and follow along, you'll see the code. Now we can't run um, Playwright in the Stack Blitz um, container, so, but you can take that uh, code later on and then run it yourself and just test it out and play around with it. So that's there for you. So let's see what we're gonna do, because this is really, really cool. We're gonna test the user end flow from the Stack Blitz website to open up um, that container, that that code, modify that code and share it with someone. Are you ready? It's really, really cool. So I've got like a, a project here and I've just installed Playwright uh, in VS Code using the VS Code extension. I get an example test, so nothing too exciting here. I want to go straight in and I want to start recording my own test. So to do that, I go to the testing sidebar and I'm just going to click on record new. Now this creates a test one spec file for me. And I can go to the browser window that gets popped up, and I'm going to put in StackBlitz. And I've got the website, and you can see in VS Code, I've got a wait page, go to stackblitz.com, all done for me. Now, as I hover over every element on the page, you can see the locator being highlighted. I could choose any one of those by clicking on it. But I don't want to test any of that. I want to go straight down to Vite, and I'm going to click on Vite, and then basically, I'm going to go and choose, let's just do vanilla Vite for now. I'm going to get a, a StackBlitz set up in milliseconds, using Vanilla Vite. Okay, and here I've got a wait page, get viral button, name Vite, get viral link, name Vanilla Vite, and I'm clicking on these. Now I'm back in StackBlitz, and um, here I've got, what well, we've got, we've got a counter, hello Vite, and we've got this counter zero. What does everyone do? They click the counter. Let's click that counter, and we've got counters one. Yes, so this is a cool application. And you can see now I've got wait page frame locator, iframe. So we're now going into the iframe, and we're testing the iframe. No extra work needed, just clicking, and we've got that. Um, that count already clicked. Now, even cooler, I can go into the main JS file and let's change the text here. Instead of hello beat, let's go playwright and beat because playwright and beat work really, really, really well together. So let's write that in. You can see that's being updated here. So this is cool. Again, I'm just using code gen to generate the test. So it's recording all of my user interactions. Let's go to counter JS and let's uh, change the counter. We'll start at five, just, you know, so it's easy to demonstrate that this is a different counter than the, the actual starter pack. And uh, we'll increment that by five and then, then you know, reset it to five. Okay, so this is cool. What would a user do now? Well, they wanna save their work, right? So let's save that. And um, obviously I wanna share it with the world. So let's click on that share button. We get a copy URL button. 
we'll click on that and then we'll open up a new tab. Now this is like a new user. They're gonna you know, paste that in there and they're gonna get that. Look at that, the counters five. Um, so this is cool. This looks like the code we've just created and Playwright and Venus there and count is five. Okay, that's cool. That's nothing like special. We're gonna click on it, count is 10. Um, this is just how stack blitz work, which is cool. But look, in Playwright, we've got everything written for us. So we've just generated all of those actions that we have basically um, clicked on. So it's a little bit messy right now. There's a couple of extra things in there that I need to tidy up, um, such as when I was clicking on things and I had to press, you know, caps lock and arrow right and things like that. But we don't want Playwright's not going to need to do that. So we'll just remove kind of like those little tiny things to make it that we're just going straight into that locator, uh, the element on the page, and we're just basically, you know, filling it with the actual number five. And in this case is what we're doing here, right? We have those, those three fills that are uh, basically saying counter is five. So just after counter JS, change the counter to five. Perfect. So let's just separate these out a little bit. And we can see down here, we have our uh, save, we're clicking our save button, our share button, our copy URL button. So this is great. And then just down below, you can see we've got a couple of errors there, right? Um, let's just, you know, put that aside for now. We'll comment that out and we'll come back to that later because I just want to see, does this actually work? You know, is Playwright going to wait for that stack blitz to load up so that that user can click that button? Or do we have to manually set timeouts or, or how is it going to work, right? So let's, let's check this out. And I'm going to run the test using UI mode. So NPX Playwright test dash dash UI. I could run it straight from VS Code. Uh, but I want to actually see UI mode because it's really cool. This will give me a new window. I'm just going to put it into full screen mode and I'll zoom in here. And you can see my test one spec, just called test. And I'm going to run that. And it's going to start running that test for me. Now you can see I've clicked on it. It's opened up that stack blitz environment there. And it's like it's waiting a couple of seconds, right? Because it's going to load. And, you know, is this going to actually work? Is Playwright going to wait? And bam, okay, wow, look at that. So I didn't have to do anything. Playwright waited for everything to be ready. And I've got as far as my share, my copy URL. Okay, so you can see I press the save button. The code has been changed. You can see it being modified there. You can see in the preview, the count is one. Um, so everything is exactly as we would expect it to be, and it's working. So this is really, really cool. And uh, you can see all the actions. We can go back and forward in time to see you know, what was happening, what we were clicking on. Let's click on watch mode so we can watch it, go back to VS Code, and uh, let's just close that terminal and let's, you know, change down the bottom, we'll uncomment un this. And basically what we're doing down here is, it is like another user, right? We've shared this code and the other user comes up. So we don't want this to be in the same browser, right? We want it to be in like a different browser, like a different incognito uh, browser, okay? So we want our second part of the test to be completely separate to the first part of the test, even though it's in the same test. So this is really cool. We're creating a new incognito browser context and then we want to create a page inside that new incognito browser context. That page has nothing to do with the page at the beginning of that test. So how do we create a new incognito browser context? We can say um, context equals await, and then we'll add browser and basically new context. We're creating a new context here. This is great. And then down below, we want to basically say our page one. So we have const page one, and we want to make that equal to the context that we just created, we want to say context. In that context, I want you to create a new page. So this is all we need to do, but the browser you can see is underlined here. We just need to add that fixture up there beside the page so we have access to it into our test. Okay, this is cool. Now let's see if it works. Because I've got watch mode on, it's automatically already running that test. And I'm going to go down, I'm going to open up that first uh, stack blitz. I'm going to start modifying the code. And then I'm hopefully, I'm going to be able to share that URL and open it up into a different browser context. And look at that. There we go. You can see the five, uh, the code is there. And uh, it should just come up in a second. Let's see, does it say Playwright and V? Will it say it? Will it work? Let's see, Playwright and V, woohoo, yes. And can is 10, because we clicked the counter and we incremented from five um, to another five to 10. This is cool, right? So this is very minimal work here that we're able to basically test across you know, test in iframes and test across different users. So think of games, think of uh, chats, think of all kinds of cool things, or just testing stack blitz itself, which, you know, this should be tested by Playwright. I hope it's tested by Playwright. I'll check with them later. Uh, so yeah, you can see going down and back and forward in time, we can see, you know, what we were doing, what was happening, and we can visually see everything um, happening in the DOM snapshot 
um, inside. You can see we copied that URL. We created that browser new context, and then we created a new page, and then we went and we went to that URL, and then from that URL, we basically uh, loaded up the, the container was loaded, and we clicked on the count is five. Now we can also test if Playwright and Vita is there. There's a lot more things we could test, right? Well, we haven't really tested anything. We've just tested that this, this user flow works. So um, let's just remove that duplicate code there. We didn't need that. And um, we want to test that the count is 10. Now we could visually see the count was 10. But we weren't actually testing it. And you know, on CI, we're not going to visually see these things. So we want to actually uh, write some assertions and make sure that this is working. So we can add an assertion using um, first using, using the wait, and then we put a expect, and then our locator, which is our page one frame locator. I frame with the title preview page, get my world button, and name count is 10, and we want to expect that to be visible. So that should be visible on the page. Now these um, locators are a little bit big here. We can you know, tie it up and you know, save on duplication and make things a little easier by creating a locator. Let's call it iframe2, because it's like the second iframe we're dealing with in this test. And then we can copy the page one frame locator part of that locator. Uh, we can put it inside here, and now we can just say iframe2. And then get by roll button name count is five, and the same down below. So now we're just reusing code and tidying up and making it a little bit easier. So we've tested, or we're testing the one at the bottom, and we can test at the top as well. You know, we clicked on um, the count is zero, so we can do another locator here. We can call it iframe. Uh, we'll copy in that frame locator um, uh, text, and then we'll just put you know, iframe in here. And then we can basically say uh, get by roll button name count is one. We'll click it, and then what we want to do. We want to basically write an assertion. So we want to say um, await. Make sure you're always using await so that um, if you just write expect, you're going to have problems. So write, make sure you write await so that it's going to actually properly await for those um, assertions. So we're going to expect our iframe, get our old uh, button name count is one, and we're going to expect that to be visible on the page. So as soon as we click that, you know, expect it to be there. We already saw it's there, and now we're just adding the assertion. Um, so this is going to work. It's just going to work. So we're going to press Save. Um, and basically, because we have Watch Mode on, as soon as we press Save, it's basically going to just rerun that test. As you can see here, it's rerunning it. It's going to wait again for the stack clicks to set up. And, and you can see, like, you know, super fast. Um, everything is there. Test is going to pass. It is going to pass. I'm telling you, look, there we go. Count is 10. Uh, that means it's waiting for that stack clicks container to load. And uh, it's then making sure that that is at uh, number 10. You can see in the timeline here, we have two different timelines, right? We have from one test to the next test. And you can see those, uh, how they work different to each other. So they're separate from each other. Um, so this is cool, but you know, let's break our test because we want to see what happens. So let's do count as 10 in the first test. Um, you know, the first time you click the button, the button should not be 10. We just want to make sure that our assertion is working. And uh, Playwright will time out after about five seconds on an assertion. You can modify that if you want to. So we can see here, it's going to fail in just a couple of seconds. And we've got uh, expect iframe, get my roll button name count is 10. It's saying that this is the error that it found here. And um, we can see, yeah, count is 10. And you know, it shows it in the nice errors tab here as well. So we can you know, check in here and we can see this is count is 10. And then obviously we can zoom in and we can actually visually see that that count is one. If we couldn't, we could use a locator picker and we could kind of click around and find the right locator here. But you know, this is a really easy fix. So we can just come back in here, change that to one, press save, and our test will rerun itself. And we are happy to go. Like this is a really, really cool test. So we're literally testing the user flow from the StackBlitz website, clicking on that, you know, Vite, uh, setting up that project, modifying it, uh, changing it, and uh, saving it, copying it to share it with someone else, setting up a new incognito window um, as if we'd send that to somebody, somebody else to open up, and then opening that up and checking that you know the count is actually 10 once somebody clicks it to see that the code really has changed. So this is a you know, matter of minutes. We have this test written and set up with very, very minimal work. That is how Playwright works. Playwright is super cool. So make sure you check it out. Playwright is open source and free. You can see our NPM downloads, our GitHub stars are through the roof. We love stars. So if you like our project, please star us. Um, we have some amazing ambassadors. Check out the work that they're doing and all the you know, talks and workshops and materials that they're creating because they're absolutely incredible. And you'll find them all on Discord as well as our community on Discord. We have over 6,000 members there. We have a hell of a lot of articles and uh, talks and a health channel as well. So you know, 
So make sure you chat to the community there because that's where they all hang out. And it's super cool. Thank you for being part of the community if you're already part of the community. Um, seriously, my only question is, are you ready to play right? You really, really should be. I hope after this talk that you could go away and start writing and testing those end-to-end -end experiences. Uh, thank you very much. Check out the Docs Player, the Dev. Check us out on Twitter, YouTube, and Discord. Have a great day and happy testing.